Hello artists! I'm back with another tutorial. This is an answer to a request for a demo for the 150 brush stroke a la prima assignment. You can set something up or you can work from a picture. Today I am going to work from this image that I found online. The demo that's included with the assignment, somebody doing a painting of actually a tube of paint, um, but it didn't show how the colors were mixed and how decisions were made. So you can see my palette. Actually, I'm going to lift this up a little bit. All right, so I have wet my painting surface. I think I'm going to wet it a little bit more. I didn't tape down my paper canvas, so it's likely that it will get a little, it'll get a little wavy on us. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a light color, not the white, of course, because it won't show, but I'm going to pick a light color. And this I'm not even going to count as a brush stroke. I always like to start with a little color on my canvas. And I often pick a color that's in the background just to lightly tint and have something to play against instead of just plain old white. And now remember this is going to be counted. So I have to mix my colors first. I'm not going to mix my colors on the canvas. I'm going to mix them first. And then the whole idea of this project is to develop an intentional gestural mark so that every brush stroke in this painting will have a purpose. Take some of my white and I'm going to grab some of that primary red and that will give me a pink that's very close to the pink that's here. Remember my primary red is a cool red and it gives me a very different red from the cadmium, which is an orangey red. And now I have a deep value of this color. I'm going to add a little bit more white to it here. I'm going to have a lighter value of it. And then finally I can just grab the pure white and let it blend wet and wet when I want to do my highlights. Now there's some places where my red veers towards the warmth. So I'm going to grab some of my, I can use my primary red there when I go from a warm red or from a cool red to a warm red. I can grab this and in fact I think that I will start there. One. So I'm going to have to keep changing brushes. Two, three, and I'm going to allow, you can see why that pink or that uh, yellow from underneath has been so useful for me. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven. 12, 13, 14, oh my light is changing, 15, 16, 17, 
I'm going to go turn on the light. It's gotten really dark in here. My sunlight has changed so much better. I can actually see what I'm painting.
I'm going to come in and start cutting from the outside. And I'm going to start with my lighter colors first because I find that I can control it more. It's okay to let some of that color from underneath show through. I'm going to bring this green in a little closer because I made my, since I didn't sketch it out first, I made my flower a little too big. And that's a part of the experience of working a la prima. That's all right. I have to count my strokes and I'm not going to have time therefore to come back and get this little bit of blue green here that I really like. And then it switches to the darker green. And my yellow green. So I'm definitely going to finish this well under the uh, under 150. I see a little bit of green here. Now I'm going to make a really dark purple. Because I like purple better than pure black for my shadow here in the water. some room for my under the water and add a little bit of black to that start. It's not all the story, but it's a start.
remember that when you're painting this, you're not looking to do a photographic rendering. What you're doing is instead trying to capture the excitement that you would feel from trying to create something really quickly, capturing the essence of life before it disappears. The impressionists, the expressionists, working from life, are very interested in capturing those fleeting moments. Their less intent on making slavish copies. of a photograph and honestly you've got a camera why would you want to make a slavish copy something that a camera can do with one button come in and do some refined line work. So I don't want to do complete outlines everywhere. And I got to clean my water. See how dirty it is? I can't get clean colors if my water's dirty. So periodically you have to clean your water so you can get clean colors. So pick your colors and where you want to have more definition feel like I could have a little bit of a brighter pink here and have that dissolve into white. a few more brush strokes here and there to add a tiny bit more definition to my shadowed areas and I think I'm going to call this one finished. Alright artists, so that should have come in well under 150 strokes. And it's a quick demo to show you how you should blend the majority of your colors before you start and how to, I mean, you can always sketch it ahead of time, but how to begin by just brushing and trying to keep as often as possible, have your brush stroke go in the direction of the form that you're depicting and try to get it in one or two swipes each time. Um, and this adds an element of urgency and gesture to your work.